What is up everybody? Welcome back to WWE Draft Wars. My name is Matt Mantle Bay and I'm joined again by Nathan. Hiya everybody. We are back with the first SmackDown Live after the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, which was of course won by one of our SmackDown superstars. So we will hear from him later on about what he's going to do with that uh, WrestleMania main event in the bag, as well as, of course, hearing from all of our other brilliant superstars. So let's get right into the show. And we're kicking it off with a little pre show bout as we see the return to uh, SmackDown Live, kind of, of Justin Gabriel as he teams with the Ascension to defeat Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers in seven and a half minutes when Gabriel pins Sunil Singh with a 450 splash. Ooh, 450. Was he the first person to do a 450 in WWE? Not a chance. It's going to be someone like Paul London. Oh, that's a shout. Or Kidman, I guess. Yeah. Also, you probably want to set Gabriel's picture. Yeah, I thought I'd done that. My bad. Um, but yeah, Gabriel getting a 60. Uh, Victor getting a 48. Connie getting a 41. Uh, which is actually what the uh, Singh brothers get as well, 48 and 41, and Jinder getting a 69. Spooky. And a big win there for Justin as he teams with the Ascension as they ascend to victory as he ascends to the top rope to then descend after he hits the 450 splash. But while he hits the 450 splash, he ascends too as he jumps up in the air before he descends. Yeah. Uh, both members of the Ascension improving some of their skills, which is nice to see. And uh, interestingly, Jinder still getting really good ratings, despite, I think, not having a win yet. Justin Gabriel getting a really good rating as well for how often he's been used. Yeah, Fun fact, this will be the first time everyone in the series sees Justin Gabriel. Yeah, he's had a couple of appearances on Talking Smack, but it is his Smackdown kind of debut. As we move on to the main show. And of course, it's kicked off by the daddy himself, Shane McMahon. And he announces that at No Way Out, there will be two Elimination Chamber matches for SmackDown. Two! One of them will be for the Men's Heavyweight Championship. And the other one will be for the United States Championship. I got it right this time. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so that will be for the United States Championship. Uh... And the other one for the World Heavyweight Championship, as well as the one that will be on Raw, uh, which was for the Universal. Or is it? Out. Yeah, it's for the Universal. So two main titles and one um, sort of mid card title on the line in the chamber at the Royal Rumble. Not the Royal Rumble, no way out. Oh, you just in the Royal Rumble. You almost nailed it, but no, you've got to go. Whoopsie. I'm mistake. very tired. We move on from that announcement to our first qualification match. No, we don't. I forgot I changed it. Fuck, I always do this. I have it in my head and then I'm ready and I'll change something at the last minute and forget that I changed it. What we have is a tag team number one contenders match to face Gargan Ono at No Way Out. But it is a draw as the New Day go to a double count out with the bar. Uh, what has happened? They've been fighting for about 13 minutes. If you look at it, that's a long time. Yeah, uh, New Day and the Bar. They take the brawl to the outside. Save it goes for a dive over the top ropes, but he's caught by Cesaro. He's caught by Sheamus. Big E tries to save him, but also caught by Cesaro and Sheamus. And uh, the New Day, sorry, the Bar try to put New Day through one of the announce tables, Ooh. but they fight them off. Big E lifts up both members of the Bar. Puts them on the table, doesn't break the table yet. Xavier goes onto the uh, the little sort of padding of the guardrail by the announcers. You know the the plastic thing that Naomi does the saves on every Rumble now because she's the new Kofi Kingston. Um, Xavier Kofi Kingston goes for a big elbow. Puts them through the table, but Biggie goes down as well because WWE, and that's what happens. And uh, no one can make the count. Double count out because they were fighting backstage. By the by, the time that Z uh, Xavier goes for the elbow, it's like the count of seven or eight. Nobody makes it back to the ring. 
Xavier and Seamus. Uh, so, ugh, I'm getting everything wrong. Xavier and Cesaro being the legal men, as I said earlier. And uh, double count out, so no number one contenders crowned. Number one. And we'll have to see what happens. As that is probably the worst description of a match that we've done on this series, which is saying a lot. Big E improved his performance skills on that match as we a 77B, which is not bad at all, especially for a no uh, contest. Because usually if you have like a screwy finish, fans don't like it, but they like this one. Up next, we have the Royal Rumble winner, Daniel Bryan. And he comes out to the ring... And he says, he's not going to rush into any decisions like Sasha Banks. He's going to think about it. He's going to wait. He's going to wait until after No Way Out. He's going to wait until the champions are set. He's going to decide then who he will face at WrestleMania. Whether that be AJ Styles. Whether it be whoever beats him in the Elimination Chamber. If anyone does beat him in the Elimination Chamber, he might gank it through. You never know. It might be... Uh, Brock, not Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins. It might be Brock Lesnar. It might be Rusev. I can't think of anybody else who made it in. Rusev, Putria, Rusev, Machka. Daniel Bryan doesn't care who it is. He just wants to find out because he's going to decide who he'll have the more fun match with. And that's who he will pick. And also he doesn't want too many head injuries. So maybe not Brock. If Brock wins. But then he's interrupted by the big boy Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe comes out and he says, Brian, you may have won the Rumble, but you were lucky. You got a late draw. You hid. You weren't in any of the action. You didn't get distracted by Zelina Vega like he did. Cheated. He was cheated out of the win at the Royal Rumble. And he challenges Brian to put his Royal Rumble win and subsequent Mania main event shot on the line against Samoa Joe. And Brian doesn't say no, but he doesn't agree to it. Damn. He just says, why? Why should I do this, Samoa Joe? And Joe says, because you're a coward, and I'm going to prove you're a coward. So face me. Or the world will know how much of a coward you are. He says, fight me, daddy. Yeah, and that promo is a 74 B minus. As uh, we uh, go to the next segment. So next up, we have our first No Way Out Elimination Chamber qualifying match for the World Heavyweight Championship. And it is Alistair Black qualifying first by beating Bobby Lashley in 12 minutes by pinfall with a black mass following botched interference by Bobby Lashley's manager Leo Rush Rush trying to distract Black trying to get a sneak advantage for Lashley but messes it up accidentally costs Lashley the match and uh, Lashley walks into the black mass and gets pinned 1-2-3 by Alistair Black Black getting an impressive 73 Lashley getting a 58 as that match gets a 67C plus, which isn't too bad. Ripperino to Big Bobat Lashley. Yeah, so Alistair Black getting a big, big opportunity in the Elimination Chamber. Can he get the victory in there? Can he walk out as the World Heavyweight Champion? It's probably a fade to black pun in there somewhere, but I can't find it. No. Next up, however, we cut backstage. Oh, we what a see, title. We see last week's surprise return, Jimmy Wang Yang, entering the Rumble. What number did he enter in, Nathan? Well, I couldn't tell you. It was about number 17 or something. I was actually going to guess 18. It was 21. Ooh. Jimmy Wang Yang entering in at number 21. And he happens to bump into... Another surprise entrant into the Royal Rumble, Space Monkey, who got in after Rey Mysterio 
was mysteriously attacked backstage last night. Uh, and Jimmy Wang Yang, he's there in his uh, cowboy getup, and you notice there's a big sheriff badge on Jimmy Wang Yang. <gasps> I'm still a sheriff for these parts, he yeah. says. And Jimmy Wang Yang says, I've been looking for you, monkey. And it's not racist, because he's actually a monkey. <laughs> Just like to defend myself there. He's not, it's not racist, he's a natural <laughs> monkey. He says, I've been looking for you. Shane has asked me, Sheriff Jimmy Wang Yang, <gasps> to look in to the vicious attack on Rey Mysterio at the Royal Rumble. Oh my gosh. And my first point of questioning happens to be you, Space Monkey. Because you just happen to be uh, backstage right by Rey Mysterio when he was found. You just happened to be there. You just happened to get a shot in the match because of it. And you're acting very suspicious. And Space Monkey he's sat there, he's eating a banana, and he just goes, It wasn't me. But he can talk. Yeah, Space Monkey can talk. Of course he he's can a talk. Monkey. He's a science experiment, you idiot. He's a monkey. He's a space monkey, Nathan. This whole, this whole segment is bananas. B E N A N A S. This is why you have no friends. <gasps> but Space Monkey says, It wasn't him. But he says it the way Space Monkey would say it, but I don't have the time or effort to put into doing it that way. It wasn't him. He was eating his banana. He was looking the other way. He didn't see what happened. All he heard was an attack and some shouts, and he turned round. Rey Mysterio was laid there. Then Shane ran up, ran up, ran up, and gave him a shot in the match. And Jimmy Wang Yang looks a little bit suspicious, but he believes him. He says... Don't go running off anywhere. Stick around. I might have more questions for you. But for now, you're safe. And they go their separate ways. But uh, Jimmy Wang Yang and Space Monkey, my dream team. Next up, we have a match between two cruiserweights on the show, Drew Gulak and Tony Nese, getting an opportunity on the main show. But their match only lasts 6 minutes and 42 seconds before it descends into chaos after Chad Gable interferes. Mm. Uh, attacking both men. Drew Gulak getting a 52. Tony is getting a 49, which isn't too bad. That's uh, disgraceful from Chad, though. How two, will he be Gable to sleep at night? Two lower card uh, cruiserweights trying to find a way um, to make themselves into a title picture. Uh, no work improvements for that, unfortunately, as we have a little change here. As Chad Gable is changing his gimmick, which gets an average, which I'll take, because most of my gimmick changes are terrible. But we then get Gable stood in the middle of the ring with a microphone, and he demands a title shot. He says for too long he's been taken advantage of, he's been attacked by Nakamura, he's been t made fun of by... Uh, Baron Corbin and Elias and it's time for him to take an opportunity for himself as apparently he's already not suited to his gimmick which doesn't make much sense because he's just got an average but well, uh, uh, he says it's time for me to prove that I'm the best wrestler in this company and that I can beat anybody so he demands a title shot and Shane goes you know what fair enough you have been uh, attacked and made fun of. And you have been impressing in matches. So next week, you'll have one more challenge. And if you win, you're in the United States Championship Elimination Chamber. And uh, 50D+. Plus. Not too bad for uh, Chadley. But uh, we'll see what happens next week. As next up... We go to another uh, heavyweight championship qualifying match as Shinsuke Nakamura defeats Jeff Hardy in 15 minutes 45 seconds by pinfall with a Kinshasa. Hardy getting a 69, Nakamura getting an impressive 88 as the match gets a 77B. So Nakamura joins uh, Alistair Black and of course AJ Styles in what is Possibly the main event of No Way Out. We'll have to see. But uh, it does join him in that 
World Heavyweight Championship Chamber match. Big man in a big chamber. Yeah. Following that, we have Becky Lynch come out to the ring and she starts to cut a promo about her successful title defence at the Royal Rumble against Charlotte Flair. And uh, then Asuka comes out. And Asuka says she's recovered from their match at Unforgiven. She is ready for a rematch at Becky Lynch. And she is going to beat anybody on the roster to prove that she is ready for that title shot. Then out comes Charlotte. She says, you're going to have to wait your turn. I'm not finished with Becky. And then out comes Shane McMahon. Mr. Big Daddy Shane himself. He comes out and he goes, girls, girls, you both want a shot at Becky, but you're both going to have to wait. Because the other women on this show have had something to say about how you three decide that you want to run it for yourselves. And they've all been demanding a shot. And I think it's time that they got one. So next up, we are going to have a six-woman match to find out who will be the number one contender for Becky Lynch's title at No Way Out. But you two aren't going to be in it. You two, you're going to give someone else a chance. If you have a problem with that, you can take it up amongst yourselves. But my decision is final, and we will be having a number one contenders match next but for now, you two, you have to go backstage. And that segment gets a 62C. Not great, but not too bad. Do you want to know a fun fact? What's that? Steve Austin doesn't have eyebrows. Thanks. Yeah, maybe that's why he hated The Rock so much. Could be. The whole feud was over the people's eyebrow. It was, yeah. And Austin was like, but that's... That, you say that's a people's eyebrow, but it's not my eyebrow, and I'm one of the people. And the rock's like, how is it not your eyebrow? Why? He's like, well, I don't have an eyebrow. And the rock's like, why do you think you don't have an eyebrow? And Austin goes to explain, and the rock's just, it doesn't matter what you think. So WWE get a lot of stick for uh, not using their women properly, but you have got to be worse. You're using a women's segment to promote the rock versus Steve Austin. And their eyebrows. You I mean, make, that's women's sex. Me sick. still got Shane McMahon in. You make me sick. Are you telling me that you would Next not up, watch that we match? have that Arguments. women's number one contenders match. And it is Sonia Deville who picks up the win, defeating Carmella, Naomi, Nikki Cross, Ruby Riot, and Bailey in just under 12 minutes when Sonia Deville picks up the submission on Naomi with a modified whatever that is. Google Plata. I can never say it properly. Oh, do you want to know a fun fact that I've just realised about every woman in this match? They have more eyebrows than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, they've all got eyebrows. Oh, shut up. Bailey got a 51. Carmella got a 45. Naomi a 52. Nikki Cross a 44. Ruby Wright a 47. And Sonya Deville, the best of the bunch, with a 59. We have some improvements as well as Naomi improves her performance skills, as does Sonya Deville. And then Bailey improves both her performance and her rumble skills as that match gets a 58C minus uh, as we try and establish more of the women's division outside of the big three. I think we do need to take a moment to say how impressed we are that Sonia Deville has managed to develop into the best performer of the night out of those because there are some very talented women in that match and Carmella. Yeah, I knew where it was going. I'm going to hell. But genuinely, that's very impressive from Sonia Deville. Yeah. Potentially. There's no relation to Cruella. Well, we don't know that. It's, that's not... It's spelled differently. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not. It's like it's languages and stuff. Maybe she changed it because she didn't want to be associated with Cruella. That's a good point. Maybe that's why Bailey changed her name. Because she was actually related to Kaylee Ray. She was called Bailey Ray. I thought you were going to make a Bailey's as in the alcohol. Or Bailey Ray Cyrus. Shut up. After that, we cut backstage back in Shane McMahon's office. And out comes The Miz, everyone's favourite. Teacher. The Miz. And he says, Shane, you had the new day. 
face off against the bar to for the number one contendership for the tag titles at No Way Out. And that was your mistake. And they proved that that was a mistake by both of them getting counted out of the match. You have one chance to make this right. And there's only one way you can make this right. And that is by giving The Miz and The Hawk, Kurt Hawkins, the title shot at No Way Out. Shane doesn't look convinced. He says, why, why do you deserve it over any of the other teams on SmackDown? We've got Sanity. We've got some other teams that I can't think of off the top of my head. We've got the Ascension. They were on earlier. We've got the Sings. Why shouldn't they get a title shot? Why are and, they called the Sings if they never sing? Because that's their name, you idiot. And The Miz says, none of those Either have you. main evented WrestleMania. And he walks out, leaving Kurt Hawkins to look a little bit smug. And then realises that The Miz isn't there. And then he walks out. And we get an 85B+. The Miz continues to pull in solid ratings, showing Daniel Bryan how it's done. How come Shane performed poorly in that segment, but Kurt Hawkins didn't, Mike? Because Kurt, Haw- yeah, Kurt Hawkins has learned well from The Miz. Is Kurt Hawkins rated in this segment? He is, actually. What on? Entertainment. Ah, very entertaining. The Miz is teaching him well, Nathan. The Miz is teaching him how to be a star. I'll make you a star. And if the sh- if Shane is clever, you could be looking at your future SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Shane and The Miz are actually the current Tag Team Champions in real life. We don't talk about that. Next up, though, we have a Tag Team match in the main event. And it's two sort of rivalries mashed together. Daniel Bryan and Hideo Itami versus Penta and Samoa Joe. Now, Daniel Bryan's shot at Mania isn't on the line here. But Shane has made this match just uh, to see what Samoa Joe has got. Just see if he can prove himself. See if he is worthy of a shot at Daniel Bryan. And it looks like he is. As Penta and Samoa Joe pick up the win when Joe beats Bryan by pinfall with a muscle buster. However, not entirely, entirely clean. As uh, Penta had come off the apron and he'd snuck round and he'd attacked Hideo Itami not long before the finish. Had distracted Daniel Bryan and Joe caught him unawares. Hit him with a, uh, a muscle buster and picked up the win. Brian with an impressive 91 in-ring performance. Samoa Joe, even though he was off his game, got an 85. Penta got a 70. And Hideo Itami got a 69. Nice. As we look look at some improvements. Hideo Itami improving his performance skills. uh, Which is nice. A 77B main event match. Very good indeed. However, that isn't the end of the show. As we still have a very big segment to come. As outcomes... The WWE World Heavyweight Champion, AJ Styles. And he comes out to the ring and he says, At the Royal Rumble, I defended my title against the monster, Braun Strowman. Braun! And at no way out now, I have to face five other men in the Elimination Chamber. But he's not worried, because he is the phenomenal one. This is the house that AJ Styles built, didn't realise that he was a contractor before his WWE work and that he had built the PPL Centre, but apparently he did. And he goes on, and he's he's continuing to talk about how he's going to win and how he's going to beat people. He says about how Nakamura and Alistair Black have already qualified and how he beat them, and then out comes Randall Keith Orton. And Randall Keith says to Styles, yes, you beat Braun, but it was only because of me. He says, Braun was going to dismantle you and dismember you and beat you up and say mean things about your hair. But then I intervened and I took down the monster. Not for you, but for me. I deserved the shot of that title. And then at Elimination Chamber, I'm going to get in that match. I'm going to RKO you. You're going to go down. I'm going to RKO Nakamura. He's going to go down. I'm going to RKO Alistair Black. He's going to go down. 
going to RKO the other people that will be in that match. There'll probably be only two more. They'll go down. And then Randy Orton will be going to WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. And if Daniel Bryan wants to face him at WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan will get an RKO. I don't know why. And then it looks like Orton is going to hit AJ Styles with an RKO right now. But then you hear Braun. And out comes Braun. And he stomps his way down to the ring. And he gets in the ring. And he just hits Randy Orton with a big boot. And he hits AJ Styles with a right. And then he picks him up. And he hits Styles with the power slam. And he picks up Randy Orton. And he hits him with a power slam. And he picks Styles up again. Hits him with another power slam. Picks up Randy Orton. Hits him with another power slam. Picks up AJ Styles. Changes it up a little bit. Throws him out of the ring. Picks up AJ, uh, Randy Orton. And then psychs you out. Hits him with another running power slam. Picks up Orton again. Throws him out of the ring. On top of AJ Styles. Clears a table from ringside. The one that wasn't broken by the bar. And the new day earlier. And he picks up both men. Choke slams both of them through the table at the same time. That's how strong he is. You've got ring crew and you've got referees and you've got backstage people coming out to try and stop Braun Strowman. He starts throwing them about. He throws them everywhere. He throws one into the crowd. He throws one at the timekeeper. He throws one to go see Hornswoggle under the ring. Fit Finley comes out, tries to tell him off. Braun Strowman picks him up. Power slam. No one left. Everyone's dead. Only Vince backstage in his little headphones telling Michael Cole to act scared. And Braun looks at the title, picks it up, holds it above his head, and then throws it on the dismantled corpse of AJ Styles. <gasps> As Smackdown Live goes off the air. Right. We get an ATB, a solid show, increasing our popularity in 18 regions. We have a lot of storylines building up here. A lot of uh, sort of lower talented guys getting on the card as well. Looking to build their way up for the future. But we still get a very solid rating. Thanks to our stacked main event scene. Hashtag stacked. Yeah. So we have the first entrance into the elimination chamber. And we'll see who else gets into the match. At the end of uh, well, on the next episodes, both on Raw and on SmackDown, who gets into the respective chamber matches? Everyone knows who's in the chamber on Raw. Yeah. Oh, true. That is true. Rusev um, will be fighting Finn Balor, Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and the champion Seth Rollins. But will Drew McIntyre be able to compete? Find out on Raw. Spoilers. He can't. Oh, he That's what you get for making this episode even longer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>